All right, so something Gerard and I, something you and I have been discussing and navigating, seems like since the day we were born, is the idea of confidence and what it means. From me and you talking about creating content to on the basketball court to our parenting to like so many different areas of our life and what confidence means to us. And it keeps being like a reoccurring theme. And man, I don't know. I just love the idea of helping. I think a lot of people struggle with that. I think a lot of people have this insecurity about um, their potential, about their gift that they already have. And why do you think it is so many people continue to run into these walls when they have opportunities um, in life of, man, I need, I really need help with my confidence. What's, what is this, what is this thing of confidence that people keep running into? Yeah. I wanted to talk about this with you because I feel like it's something that's not really taught, you know, it's not really talked about much. Uh, I feel growing up, I struggled with it. I struggled with it most, most my life. And, uh, you know, even, even today, you know, just, I still kind of will struggle with confidence in myself and um, if I have what it takes, even though there's like pure proof and evidence of the success and, and the achievements and the overcoming hardship. And I think a lot of people have that evidence, but it's so easy to, on a day-to-day -day basis, to get caught in a down world spiral, you know, and, and just, I think it's like something like, we have like seventy to eighty thousand thoughts a day, and yeah. the moment you wake up, apparently, the majority of these thoughts can be negative, right? And so, like, we can beat ourselves up. We can be so hard on ourselves. And I feel like this idea of confidence and building your self esteem and building yourself up and believing yourself is is to me a, a skill. It's a muscle. It's something mm -hmm. that we got to work on every day. Because I know if I don't do that, if I don't work on that every day, man. I, this little inner critic in me, bro, is, is rough. Yeah. You know, He's like a bully. Bully, yeah. Well, I think one of your superpowers, something that I've like continually fascinated by you, is you one of the most powerful questions anyone can ask is someone that they love, hey, what is something I need to hear but I don't want to hear? Yeah. That's one of the most yeah. powerful questions. What is something I need to hear but I don't want to hear? And we go to the basketball court and we enter this game and these guys are pretty intense and they're pretty aggressive and they're loud. And you know, the next day you're like, or maybe that day you were like, man, I don't know if it was like my, it was like one little thing that threw your confidence off. Right. And, um, but then you asked the next day, like, what do you think I need to work on my jump shot, my dribble? And you were openly asking for feedback, which 99.9% .9 of people don't do. They don't want to hear the shadow side of them. And so where did you learn the ability to like, ask me like, or ask people like, hey, even as you ask your dad stuff, you ask me, you ask so many people stuff. You're like, hey, where's the shadow that I'm not seeing in my life right now? You continually do that in every mm -hmm. avenue of your life. Where did that come from and how did you develop that muscle? Because that's, mm -hmm. I don't, I've never seen anyone do it really like well or often or in general. Well, yeah, no, first of all, I appreciate that reflection. And then this is a, a total freaking uh, uh, cheat code, you know, like, I, I think we avoid, we avoid asking people for, you know, feedback on how we can be better. But you, if you go, if you have f homies and friends and even family members that you can go to and ask, not just about like what you can be better, but I also ask, like, what am I great at? Like, what do you feel my superpowers are? Because a lot of times we don't, you, we're so in it, you know, we're a fish in a fishbowl. We, we're so in it. We, we know, our, we think we kind of, we, a lot of times we just overlook our superpowers. Yeah. We really do. And it's also the same thing with the shadow. Sometimes we just overlook things. And, and I feel like when it really grew, because I always kind of grew up with this uh, ambition to want to be better. I think a lot of people feel that way. Like It's like, you know, you want to become the best version of yourself. But I actually avoided feedback for the majority of my life. Then I went into a leadership program called Ascension Leadership um, Academy. And you get feedback on a whole nother level. And that just, you know, got me to understand that it's, it's not a negative thing, you know, mm -hmm. especially, look, some people, they will give you unsolicited feedback and you got to be really careful. But I think when you actually choose for the feedback, you go and you ask for feedback, especially from like close confidants, 
the man the, the information you get back is is huge and not all of some of it you know you, you can really take and inquire about some of it may be true some of it may be like oh, okay you know like um this is one perspective yeah like chew the meat and spit out the bones like take what you want and then kind of like be discerning with what you receive yeah yeah for sure or what you digest yeah yeah but i just feel like yeah man it's a it's a superpower it's a it's definitely a cheat code to get feedback I ask for it all the time. Yeah, I know. What are my strengths? What do you see in me that's unique? What and what are ways that I can be better? And man, it's just because like again, we'll overlook we'll overlook those things, but also there's just like wisdom. Like I'm a wisdom seeker. Mm. You know what I mean? And a lot of times we'll go through life and we'll be in a pattern and you don't even recognize it, but then you're wondering why you're stuck, why you're not going to the next level or why the same shit keeps happening in your life and you don't recognize it. Yeah. And then you can go to the people really close to you and they may help you and reveal something to you that you don't, you don't see. Cause we can't, sometimes we can't see everything 360. Yeah. That's why you have friends. That's why you have coaches. That's why you have mentors. That's why you have partners, you know, is to go to them. You just gotta be careful who you ask. Cause some people, man, they do want to bring you down. They do. They're looking for an opportunity because they want to project their own insecurities onto you. So you need to make sure you go to the right people when you're asking for feedback and um, people that want to see you win, but that aren't going to yes you to death. They aren't going to people please you. They're actually going to tell you what it is you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And that's hard. I've gotten, I've asked for feedback from a lot of people and sometimes they don't give it to me. Hmm. You know, they'll just start all of a sudden telling me everything they like about me. I'm like, no, 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 dog, this isn't about that. Yeah, thank you. And what's, what's like an area that you think is a blind spot for me? Yeah. The iron that. sharpens iron. There's sparks, you know, like that friction's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, bro. No, bro. It was something, I mean, everything, I think everything like the same way you show up to the gym and the basketball court is the same way you show up to business and your wife. So I, I like to look at it as those references of like, you know, you, like you said, we focus so much on like where we messed up on the court or where we're not good on the court. Like I would never put you in a center role to get rebounds, but you were like, man, should I pass it more? Should I like do picks and rolls more? Should I shoot the... You know, and like you were asking for these critiques because you're right, I'm watching you play the game. So I can probably tell you where you messed up and you probably can't see because you were in the on the court. And same in life, you know, so from content to parenting to our partners, our queens, you know, um, yeah, that's been like a wild ride seeing you do that, seeing you lean into that. And, and for anyone watching, man, just the most powerful question you can ask someone is, what do I need to hear, but I don't want to hear? Mm. And someone could be like, your jump shot sucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I do not want to hear my jump shot sucks. But, or, or your content seems a little stale or your, um, whatever it is, there's just so much that we're terrified to hear because we think it's going to define us instead of strengthen us. Yeah. And, and so you are continually like pushing your confidence to every level. And I love just the reference of basketball because then the next time you went out and played, you were more, more focused on certain things, you know? Um, yeah, and then I study too. Like I started studying Steph Curry's shot. You know, you start looking at like, okay, like because we can always become better, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times it's doing our own homework, doing our own self reflection too. Like actually, self. I mean, I, I I don't do that enough. Sometimes I'm like, man, I just I should just take some time, journal a little more about what did I learn this last week. You know, sometimes we'll go to church, you get a sermon, right, and then you just move on to your week. But are you actually then living that? sermon looking at those those things you know we heard a sermon recently it was like challenge the shadow mm. a lot of people just go to church just to go to church but it's like then they won't integrate yeah and so for me like the whole idea of feedback is is this op opportunity for me to like reflect on things that i can be improving upon so that way then i can integrate and practice those things and become better at those things yeah and and if anyone listening if you're asking yourself like man should i get a life coach should i join the creative collective should i join a mastermind 100%. Like LeBron James has a shooting coach. Denzel Washington has an acting coach. And you're just like, continue to look at the greatest of the great still have coaches. Mm -hmm. And you watch the Michael Jordan documentary and you watch the Steph Curry documentary and you're like, oh my God, wait a second. Like they have so many different coaches and they're constantly, the reason they're the best is because they're open to feedback. They're open to criticism. They're open to changing up a little bit here, changing up a little bit there. And, and man, that's where confidence comes from. Cause it's so mental, right? Yeah. And so when you make a mistake on the basketball court, you make a steal or, or you, you throw a steal or you miss a shot. The greats are separated because Steph Curry will take the same shot, right? Remember that? Oh my God. This is something I wanted to talk about. I'm so glad you're bringing <laughs> it up. Right. Because it's so interesting how like courage is so tied to 
to confidence. Bravery wow. is so tied to, con- to confidence. Wow. Right? You've got to be brave to go and take that shot a second time after missing one, two. Michael Jordan, right? Misses, I think, what is that quote where he missed 27,000 shots? Or I could be completely Something off, like that, yeah. Right? Before he ended up actually finally becoming the Michael Jordan. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the things that I've been really thinking about a lot recently is, is failure. You know, this relationship to failure. I mean, I know that it is it is beating me down thinking that I've failed people, ideas, shots, whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's like this is how we this is how we create success. Yeah. You hear about the success, but you go ask someone how they got there, they're gonna tell you they had to miss however yeah. many shots, had to get up however many times. Yeah. And so it's like confidence built from from courage, the courage to keep going, to keep trying, to keep believing in yourself. Even after you make the mistake, you know, I always tell my team, I'm like, if you're not making mistakes, we're not moving forward. Yep. Right. It's like we got, that's the way, that is where confidence is built in my honest opinion. Yeah. Because you got to go and have the bravery to. Rapidly fail. That's what the guy who invented the Google glasses, he was speaking at this conference I was at and he was like entrepreneurship or inventions is rapid failure Mm. fail as quick as you possibly can as many times as you can because the sooner you fail the sooner you figure out how what doesn't work right yeah there was like i don't know a thousand plus reiterations of google glasses and he was just like yo we had to fail quickly because we had to see what wasn't working and so the the first person who covered steph curry's game in college that like steph finally made a name for himself he was like the craziest thing is he missed his three-pointer Someone got the rebound, passed it to him, and then he shot the second three-pointer and, and made it. And he, yeah, what you just said, he's like, he's, I never thought there was someone that had that kind of confidence and swag to shoot immediately right after they missed because how much, how much pressure you feel after you miss a three-pointer, if you miss a second three-pointer, man, you're gonna, like, people are going to be pissed, you know? Yeah, it's such a great documentary because Steph Curry, right, you would think that he would have got into this big school. He dreamed of going to the same school of his mom and dad. His dad obviously was an NBA player. Not one big D1 school picks him up. He gets only picked up by Davidson. He he completely plays the most terrible game, first game, and the coach gives him a second chance. So he goes and takes that shot and misses. You think it's going to, you know, just beat him down. And they just said the thing that they saw that was so special about Steph was every time he picked up the second time around, went to take a second shot, he... He just, he had that, he had a level of confidence. And I think it's, for me, I think the fortitude also comes into it. You know, it's a a certain kind of mental fortitude that like, I'm going to miss and I'm okay with that as long. And and so that this next time around, I'm going to be so present and I'm going to give it my all. And I don't know. I just think you have to have such strong mental fortitude to then, to be able to bounce back quickly. Bounce back quickly, try again. Bounce back quickly, try again. Bounce back quickly, try again. But know that you have, you know, one of my mentors were talking to me about, it's not about the ability, but it's like the intention and um, focusing on the intention, not just on the talent, but on the intention of what it is that you are going for. Yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's so important. That's so crucial to think about the reason some people see me and you speak on stage or do an Instagram video or a YouTube video or an interview. And they're like, man, how'd you get so good, man? You're just naturally, you know, outgoing. You're just naturally good. And it's like, I have messed up more YouTube videos and speaking on stage and reels than anyone like that. I know of, like I have more outtakes than anyone that I can think of. And that's really how I did it is, is people go, man, how, how'd you get so naturally good with your Instagram reels so quick and concise because I've messed up thousands of times I've made shitty reels thousands of times and same with you I'm sure speaking on stage hosting events whatever hosting retreats and the creator collective the reason I think we're so excited about this community we're building now is because we haven't we can have immediate feedback from people who are on our team you know what I'm saying like Mm -hmm. it's internet feedbacks one thing but to have a group of 50 people and be like hey guys here's my new logo for my podcast here's my new logo for my company here's my new um content thing and you have 50 people being like great job this is where i would do better next time or this is my feedback on your logo the creator collective is the home for that it's like it's truly what we're trying to build is um constructive feedback that is tough love and nourishing and honest yeah i think a lot of times when you think about joining a community uh especially in the entrepreneurial leadership personal branding space this personal development space you know you hear a lot about this idea of um being in a like-minded community, right? 
And I think it's really important for me in the community that I've been so devoted to building is a diverse community that is not all like-minded in the same sense, right? Like they're willing to think differently. There's different perspectives from all over the world and different industries that are also willing to challenge you. Yes, we're going to celebrate you. We're going to freaking build you up. We're going to empower you. Like we all want to see each other win. There's a, there's a principle that we have called Mudita mindset. And the Mudita mindset is to celebrate the success of others with joy and without having any envy. You know, because I've had a lot of people envy me a lot of my life, you know, and it, and it could be it could be debilitating a lot of times, you mm-hmm. know, when you have people that secretly don't want to see you win, you yeah. know, and, and attack you. And it's like, I know that that's been hard for me is to like find tribe and find relationships that want to see me win, but also are willing to kind of like call me forth when I'm not showing up and challenge yeah. me or like give me some feedback on how I can be better. And that's what the Creator Collective is, you know, is, is a group of people that live the Mudita mindset, that want to celebrate you, that want to celebrate your success, that want to have joy for you, no envy, and will give you that feedback. Yeah. And that's why I think me and you do that so well of like, we, we are like that tender love of just like being stoked for people. And when someone's like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing my podcast next week, you're like, no, no, you're doing it. Tell them, say, you, say, I am doing my podcast yeah, this week. Yeah. Don't, don't say, I'm going to try. Don't say, I'm going to think. Like, you're, and that is all done with love, you know? Like, yeah. same, same when Skyla someday plays sports and Phoenix plays sports, you know, we're, we're going to be like, yeah, you lost. Like you, well, you, it's interesting you bring up Skyla, right, in Phoenix, because it's like, you know, one thing that I think you do an amazing job at, and that has inspired me, I saw you did a real once, and you talked about this idea of, like, how Phoenix would just, and I see you do this with him all the time. Like, you are such a great dad. When it comes to like championing Phoenix to get up when he's knocked down, right? And he makes a mistake when he does something. It's like you're almost like encouraging him to, to fall down, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It, but he has such a level of confidence that I've never seen in any child. Mm. And I think that goes to just show like how much we can learn from our kids, right? Now I see Skylin, I'm like, as soon as she falls down, as soon as something happens, I'm cheering her on like, yo, it's amazing, right? Now she went from crying when she falls down to getting up and like, all right, let's go bounce back. Keep going. Keep trying. Mm. And I think we see that with kids from like when they're crawling to then they're walking to then they're running. And I remember when she first started falling down, I was so, I was so nervous for her. You know what I mean? I was like, no, no, no. We have to embrace. We're all going to fall down in life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how we get back up that matters. Mm. And I think you just do a phenomenal job of that you know, as a, as a dad. And, um, you know, one of the things that I want to also touch on is something that um, one of my mentors, Ed Milet, talked about. And he actually talked about the four core qualities that he has seen from some of the most successful people in the world. And the first quality, he talks about confidence. And he talks about it in the sense of like having this such belief in what you can accomplish like it's just an unwavering like you know that you can and that you this is the this is the key that you deserve it Mm. so the most successful people in the world know not only do they believe in themselves they have the confidence they can do it but they know that they deserve it that hit me i was like wow because how many of us right we secretly don't really think that we deserve it I know that even when I did the thing and sold the company, I still didn't think that I deserved it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Forget about trying to get to making it. Self-worth. You know? So it's like that. They have an unwavering level of self-worth. Like they know they can do it. They believe it. And they believe that they deserve it. That was huge. The second thing was that they have a healthy relationship with fear. Hmm. That was another core, like core lesson for me. Because fear is so, again, so, could be so debilitating. And it's like, oh, wow, even billionaires have fear? It's like, no, 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 we all have fear. But the most successful people in the world know how to be with that fear. Yeah. And that's where, again, the feedback stuff that we're talking about comes in, right? Because if, if you can know what those fears are and then use that to fuel you, use it as like a compass, right? Like, what do you really fear? And like really be with that and lean into that. And so that way you can overcome it. I would say if you can do the hard thing, the uncomfortable thing, the uncertain thing, to go to the unknown, what, what, okay, once you walk through that a little bit, damn, it's like the possibility on the other side of that. When you walk through that fear, that's 
to me is is where the fruit is yeah so that's the second one you want to share anything on that before i move on to the third no, man, that was it i think uh yeah fear once you it's almost like when you have a fear of heights and then you finally jump off that cliff into the ocean and you go wait a second i'm alive like i survived it now you just want to keep jumping and same thing when you speak on stage for the first time and you survive you're like wait i just want to keep doing that so it's yeah, man, once you be, once you find out, this is how I think of every fear that you have, if you backtrace it with a string, it'll be tied to a lie, some lie that you were told when you were young. And so you just continue, look at what fear you have, find it, backtrace it with a string of where the fear is coming from, and you're like, oh, it's just a lie. Mm. And even the and even the devil in the Bible is called the king of lies. That's what his name is, is the king of lies. And so you think about every fear that we have is tied to this, like, this, this, uh, person this thing this entity that is just trying to keep lie to us and know that we are worthy of love we are worthy of money we are worthy of abundance we are worthy of friends that love us and you know so yeah so two is big okay yeah that's really good and i what i love about that is man that's a really powerful tool like tracing it back because like some of the common ones it's like you know fear of failure right it's like again everyone who's successful has had to fail many times thousands of times i failed so many times to be able to become a millionaire, you know? So it's like, okay, so what? You fail, and then what? You try again, and then what? And try again, and then, and then one day, what? You become that fucking millionaire that people are like, hey, now I'm asking you, how did you do it? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like, or you fear death, and it's like, well, we're already fucking dying, yeah. right? So like, what's more scary than that? Not living, right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so that was, an, that was a good one, having a healthy relationship to fear. The next one is that the most successful people in the world have strong emotional and i'm gonna say intelligence my mentor called it control emotional control so you know i get what he you know i get i want to if i'm gonna stick to what he said he said emotional control and so what he meant by that is like he's he actually related a lot to fathers and i feel like you know i've studied emotional intelligence for a long time but emotional i I get why he said emotional control because as a father you're really challenged with all of the emotions as a dad, um, I, I, at least I can speak from being a dad, a girl dad, you know, it's just, man, I remember seeing my little girl really get hurt for the first time and cry, start, and can't, I can't do anything. Like, it was like, there's nothing I can do to change that. I just got to be with her. I just got to like look her in her eyes and just be present. Daddy's here and I got you and don't worry. And there was a moment for me during a plant medicine ceremony where, where I had to go through the death of my daughter and my beloved, the deep, the biggest fear I've ever had. And, but it, it gave me this emotional control of like, I've already lived through that. So now I really can just trust God's plan. There's, you know, there's, there's only so much I can do to protect my, for my daughter and everything, yeah. but I got to ultimately trust that. And, you know, I just, I think that it's a big one. Cause a lot of times it's an interesting one that I want to get your take on because I know how much you are so in tune with your emotions and the met like the intelligence of our emotions but when he says emotional control it's interesting because i think he what he means is like not reacting responding to things Mm -hmm. right how do we respond to things and so like i think it's this balance between head and and heart and gut um so what is your like what is your take on this idea of having emotional control yeah, I mean, dude, that's this is like a whole can of worms when it comes to people doing as much work on their shadow and their trauma as possible before having a kid. I cannot stress how can you imagine me and you having kids when we're twenty five or twenty eight or just like so not understanding what's going on within our psyches of our traumas. And so I just I you know, having kids is amazing and a blessing, but you really have to mature so much spiritually, emotionally, mentally, like you have to find a partner that you will go into war with that someday they might not look beautiful. Someday they might, um, say something mean to you. So, you know, so you really got to be so mindful of yourself and then you got to find a partner that you're willing to go into the depths of your worst shadows and fears with, because if you don't do this on your work on yourself and with your partner before having a kid, that kid will experience all of that stuff that's not healed and that is where all trauma stems from you i've been i've been doing trauma work for 15 years and you talk to man i want to i've tried 99.9 percent of people it says my mom and dad or my brother and sister like siblings it's all energy within the family and so 
yeah, emotional control is everything when it comes to parenting and, and realizing that when your kid triggers you or you have no sleep and you're changing a diaper at 3 a.m. Shia LaBeouf was on a podcast talking about this and he was like 3 a.m. and I changed one diaper and then 3.10 and I changed another and third. He's like on that fourth diaper. He's like, I'm, I, the only reason I know God's real, he's, he's like at 4 a.m. in the morning, I'm changing that fourth diaper. And I was like, God, if this, if this baby shits one more time, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving up. And he's like, and it didn't shit one more time. And Shia LaBeouf was sharing that on a podcast and I was laughing so hard of just like, you, there is no compa- There's no grace in parenting. Like it is the hardest thing you'll ever do in your entire life. Not to scare people, but to prepare people that you do not want to traumatize your kids. So I, yeah, to, to echo what you said about emotional control is it's everything because I can, I could, I could be triggered by my team, by my company, even by my family and my wife. But man, if you get triggered by your kid and you say something that is going to re- wreck their entire development of what they believe who they are. It's like, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. Wow. Dude. So eloquently said, I love, man, that was powerful. So powerful. Are you wondering what the fourth is? Yeah, please. Oh my God. Let me guess. Integrity trust. Mm, That's good. That's good. Um, I'd like to say as, cause it, 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 there's no doubt about it that the most successful people in the world have, have that level. You know, probably many of them actually break a lot of integrity and still become massively successful, to be honest. We need more integrous leaders for sure. Uh, But the fourth actually is vision and the ability to visualize and imagine success. Mm. And so he says the most successful people in the world have a big dream and have a vision for where they're going. And so... For me, I feel like this is so important, man. Like, I think the balance between remembering, always remembering where you come from, but always having a vision for where you are going is so important. Before every speech the night before, I am visualizing how that audience is going to Mm -hmm. experience me on that stage and impacting someone's life. Before content, I'm visualizing. Before my day, I'm praying and I'm visualizing what I'm going to be creating you know, it's, it, I think it is, it's really important. And I feel like, I don't know where I would be without, I mean, to be honest, even my house, like this house came from me visualizing with Ashley, what it would feel like, what did it look like? How, it, you know, all these parts of it and, and, and like, yeah, feeling into what would it feel like to basically have that level of success. And so I just think that a lot of people get to be clearer. This, the, the idea with vision though, is like getting really crystal clear on it. You know, I think a lot of people have a lot of abstract visions. Hmm. And so it's like really getting crystal clear on what that vision is of what it is that you, what success is to you, Hmm. getting as specific as possible and then going through these visualizations that are like slow motion, fast motion, where are you, who you with, what is like envisioning the environment, putting yourself there. Like that to me is such a core component of, of manifesting that dream life. Amen. Wow. Dang, dude, that's, and I think to touch point on what you said earlier is self-worth. We're, we're so afraid to, vi- to vision the house and the rom- romantic relationship and our kids and our dream job because we don't believe it's possible because we don't believe we're worthy. So a lot of us are like, I ask people all the time, if you can do anything, any dream job, what would it be? And they haven't even thought about it because they don't, they don't want to tease themselves because they don't believe it's, be- it's possible. And there's a Bible quote that God says this. God says, men without vision will perish. Like that's in the, it says men without vision will just pretty much perish, you know, die. Like men without vision will die. Men will, men without vision and women will disappear. And so God is saying like, yo, if you don't have vision, you are going to perish. You're going to disappear. And so, you know, yeah, man, getting together with, with yourself, your own, intentions but also some friends some family and really asking your family and friends and or lover what do we want like what do we really want and what do we believe god's capable of and you know just starting with gratitude of like wait i already have a healthy body i already have you know working functioning organs and limbs like and then just being like man anything's possible at this point like what and seeing examples you know, for me, I, I don't ever want to show my son and my wife on social media or my fu- having fun, like jet skiing. I don't want ever, I don't want everyone, I don't want anyone to ever watch that and be like, man, that's not possible for me. I want you to watch it and be like, if BC did it, if BC got his dream wife and dream job and dream community and dream friends by loving people and leading with his heart, 
then I can too, you know what I'm saying? Or trusting God or whatever it is. And so my dream of when people see my life is I want them to see it and not get jealous or insecure, but let them know it's possible. Mm, I love that brother. Yeah. yeah that's, that's goals. And yeah, I feel uh, like you're very similar. Yeah, man. I mean, I just think we need more role models in the world. Yeah. I really do. I, I especially for my minority communities. Um, I think that there's a lot more work to be done when it comes to role models, mm. you know, and just recognizing the responsibility that we have. And it's mostly from a character standpoint. And I think there's a lot of successful people in the world that project a lot of the success from an external standpoint, but then actually don't talk about or share more about the internal sides of having structures for success. And I think that's really important in today's day and age, right? So that we don't have, you know, young men and women that are thinking they need to have these external things in order for them to be fulfilled and happy and have freedom and love and all these things or women that think they need to be doing, you know, lip injections and getting butt implants or, you know, having the per picture perfect, you know, uh, social media pages in order to get the attention and really the love that they want. It's like, we need, we need real mo role models all around. And so my, my goal is to just be a, a role model, um, for others, uh, of what success you know, can look like from a standpoint for me, at least that you can actually be rich as fuck and have a lot of money and be spiritual and be humble and be grounded in the things that really matter in life, like family and like the simple things in life yeah. yet want to splurge and, and have the fruits of whatever that looks like for you. Totally. You know, and, um, I, that, that to me is, you know, is, is a goal of mine. Um, because I think that sometimes there could be a lot of the, the money side of things shown, and it's and it's all material and it's not you know this the humble side of things you yeah. know i think a lot of the dan Bolzarians of the world um even this guy andrew tate you know they're impacting a, a lot of a lot of young guys a lot of young dudes and um and 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 ultimately like that's fine as long as they're being themselves but sometimes i get a little concerned that these guys are building up even rappers you know, and certain, uh, certain people that I just feel like are kind of, um, selling their soul, Yeah. you know, selling their soul for the, for the likes, for the followers to monetize, to have the lifestyle. Uh, but it's like, where are we leading young men right now? Yeah. Specifically, you know, where are we leading them so that they, that they, that is really important in this country right now is we need strong men, Romans. not weak men, weak minded men. And young, we need strong men that are real men, that are you know strong, that are grounded, that are rooted, that are uh, safe, that are compassionate. You know that that are loving, that lead from the heart. Yeah. You know, and that are um, yeah, do make you know building from building from that place, man. I, I just wish I had that. I'm like, yeah. man, where would I have been? Because I a lot of my role models, you know, other than my my luckily my family but like external role models yeah it's like gordon fucking gecko you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. like you know for me it was yeah. like, you know it was, it was well i was thinking when you said that role models that you know that was so profound because we love wisdom and role models the goal for gerard and i as coaches and as mentors is we're supposed to yell back to the, everyone like you know the reason if you're an entrepreneur joining it co hiring you as a coach they're basically like gerard what did you wish you did 10 years before you launch your company and you know that you're giving them wisdom and that's what we need is role models with wisdom that we're yelling back to all these young men and all these young people but we're like yo we had the women we had the money we had the fame we had it didn't do it and so like it, we just want to yell back from the mountaintop like y'all it's not it like find inner love find self-love forgive your parents find inner healing you know and like um we just want people to save time and just be be um, aware that we ta we tasted all the fruits of life. We tasted all those things: women, money, success, fame, nice cars, whatever it is, and none of it satisfied us to a level. It, it was great for what it was for our maybe our ego or our jobs, but really being like, man, when we found God, when we found stillness, when we found self love, when we found self worth. We just want young people, anyone, even if you're 30, to like know that like um, if you're chasing this stuff, it's good to like have goals and a vision board, 
but to really know that uh kind of like that Tony Robbins is like money only magnifies who someone is. Right. So it's like, you know, you can chase the money, but don't think that you're going to be generous and donate after you get the money. If you're not donating now kind of thing, you know? Mm. So like anything, success, fame, it just magnifies who you are. So just be like, man, am I really in love with myself right now? And yeah, just go inward is, is what I think we're trying to get people to. Yeah. It's just, just who you be along mm-hmm. the way. Right. Like, are you just really being who you were born to be? A lot of yeah. times we put on these masks and you know, for me, I put on a lot of those masks yeah, so that same. I could have the money, the cars, the clothes, the, the girls, the fame, the bottles, the whole nine, all those things. And it becomes just a self perpetuating cycle that's that really is is detrimental i mean i could have literally ended up you know being in jail or dead or worse i've had a couple like really scary situations and i just remember like i luckily had a couple friends that really just looked at me in the eye and said yo g i don't like i don't like who you are when you're when you're drunk and when you're Mm. you know when you're out that's not the gerard i know yeah you know what i'm saying and and even then it, it didn't hit yeah. I was still going out and just partying and doing yeah. all the things. And or you so, lose a friend and you're just like, F them, I don't need them. But then you're like, damn, I, I was in the wrong. And you yeah. lost a friend, you know? I've lost some important people in my life. Same. You know, and mainly from ego. Same. Like if there's one thing, man, it's just like at a younger age, if I, if I, if I had someone that's kind of come to me and teach me, there's a difference back to the thread of this conversation of like, there's a difference between being confident and having and being driven by your ego and like those are like two things you can meet two people that are like coming across pretty you know confident but like one is driven by the ego which is in my opinion edging god out it's more so putting on this front to to care about how they're perceived by the external versus confident which is like you know a humble warrior yeah you know, yeah, it, there's like the conceited, confident, you know, space of just like, no, you can love yourself. Sorry to cut you off, but like, yeah, you can love yourself and walk into a room with like a chest high of you look beautiful or you look hot. And at the same time, not walk over people, right. you know, not belittle people or look down on people of like, I got more followers than you. I got more money than you. I'm better looking than you. Yeah. But better, so, like a better than dude, there's nothing in you. And you, I know you do this well and I try to do this well, but there's nothing better when you meet someone that you look up to online or that mm. spoke on a stage or that's successful. And then they're like, whoa, 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 I didn't think you'd be so real or authentic. Or like, I didn't think you would talk to me after your speech. Like you prayed for that girl after the high school speech, you mm. know? And she's like, Gerard, like I connected to God cause your speech. And, and like, that is the greatest feeling in the world. Especially when we met our heroes, when we've met some of our heroes mm. and we've been like, wow, how is Erwin McMahon is this grounded you know how you know facetiming us yeah and and just you know praying with us praying for us and it's just like involving us you know and so yeah will smith was like that as well yeah you know just there's some people and then and then there's people like grant cardone who's fucking the opposite with me you know what i mean it's like god bless him he's probably evolved but yeah i've had i've I've seen both sides i really have seen both sides with um people that that have made it and honestly like i just blessings to Totally. Blessings to everyone if they're living their dream life. At the end of the day, like I, who who are we to give people like yeah. the exact blueprint? You, you know, your journey is your journey. I hope that this inspires, you know, someone on their journey to think about these things, right? And and so I kind of want to end it off with like if you were to add one more to that list, we gave four that were from my mentor, just to reframe them. Uh, first and foremost, it's it's a level of self belief of confidence in yourself. Not only that you can do it, but that you deserve it. Hmm. The second piece of that is a healthy relationship to fear. The third is a high, a, a, a high relationship with emotional control. And then the fourth is a vision. You have a vision in, of, of this life that you want to create for yourself. You're clear on what that vision is. You're tapped into your imagination. Um, what would be the fifth to you? Man, the list goes on. What would be the fifth to that is... That you feel is probably the, one of the most important common denominators and the most successful people in the world? Man, I would say something my mentor told me back in the day is it's not about you. And those three words changed my life that it's not about you to just remember that you are here to serve people, you know? And whether, you know, Steve Jobs was just like, yo, it wasn't about him. It was about... Cre- innovating right it was changing the world on how we look at technology and and um 
Jesus or whoever it is. It just, they never made it too much about themselves. And I think we're in a society and culture right now where we're so self-focused, which I get it. We're trying to heal. We're trying to figure out who we are and what our dreams are. But sometimes we get so drunk to that, that we forget the purpose and to feel like I was spending years changing the world, helping people. And then I forgot to call my sister for an entire year and she almost took her life, you know? And so I was like, what are you doing, dude? Like my, you know, my head was so far up my ass on some level that like, I forgot about my family, you know, my sister. And so that, that was a stomach punch to me to, to prioritize family, prioritize the ones closest to you. Sometimes we have best friends that we, that we know they're our best friends. And, um, and so to, to not loop, not be like, Oh, I don't need to talk to them today or the next week because whatever. But yeah, I would say that. What about oh, you? Dude, that's so good. Oh wait. The battery on the camera died. Yeah. So that would, that would be mine was, it's not about me. What about you? Fifth one. It's tough. I have two on my mind. Uh, I am going to go with the first one, which is their lifelong students. I think that this is just something that, um, I like I love like we just saw Oppenheimer and like one of the things that I loved about this movie was this man's curiosity both Albert Einstein and Oppenheimer were just so curious and you can tell that they were they, they had theories right they were practicing theories they didn't even know if these things would actually even work or not and they worked together as a team you know and I just feel like and that kind of leads to like maybe teamwork, but yeah, but yeah. now just sticking to like the student, I, I just feel like that that's everything, man. Just being curious and being an, a lifetime student. It's the reason why I'm a, I build my personal brand. It's the reason why I created the Creator Collective, is because I just I want to learn from people, man. There's something that you have to teach me. There's something that everyone who I come into contact with that that can teach me. And I think that you know a lot of times we idolize certain people but we we all have medicine we all have some deep wisdom we all have this like unique purpose and unique superpowers and i think that some of the greatest leaders in the world including this guy steve jobs were just lifelong students always curious trying new things experimenting and just learning right like how cool is it that we have this one life and if anyone here thinks they know it all they're bullshitters, right? Yeah, like yeah. We're, we're all on this big spinning rock trying to figure life out, yeah. right? And so I just, I think at one of the greatest things every single day that I love, even like Richard Branson, he was just on a recent cruise. You can just tell it, this man, he just every day is kind and is learning from others and, you know, is still just a lifelong student. And so... Man, I can go on. I think that no, list can really, that's a good one. that can keep, I feel like this list can get bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure, because what was the second one? Gosh, I, I don't know. There's two more for me. I mean, the team that led me to teamwork. Thinking about the the freaking people behind successful people. You know, like you know, I've always th I've had a hard time saying I'm self made. I understand that that the concept, um, but there's such a huge amount of people that are behind me that have sacrificed mm -hmm. and that have been on my team and that have helped me to become who I am today from my lineage to just the people that rock on my team that are going to edit this video that are, you know, on my team, on my Slack that are helping me with, with emails and helping me with scheduling things and all the little things that have to happen in order for this one piece of content to get out on social media and hopefully impact someone. It's, it's, I may be in front of the camera, but there's so many people behind the camera that are helping to make this content to get out there. And so I just think teamwork and then the one last one I would say. Oh, snap, sorry. he's doing one more. Okay, sorry, go. Sorry, okay, one go, more. Go. But that's, I, I'm just, this is me personally, but I just think a faith, man, like a deep connection to, to God, whatever that is to you. I think that's just so important, man. And, you know, just the prayer and recognizing. It's kind of like what you said, man. It's bigger. It's bigger than you. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, and that we're co-creators. You know, I always use the reference of like, someone gets drafted in the NFL because they worked really, really hard. So they went 50% and God came the other 50 of them being drafted, but they don't stop training really hard. They actually train harder, you know? Oh. And so we always have to, God's going to come 50% guaranteed. God will always meet you 50%. But if you don't go 50%, God's not going to get you to the gym. God, like God's not going to put you on the starting lineup for string quarterback you know, like you have to put in the work. So you, oh, yes, yes, you have yes. to go 50% and God will come 50. And so letting people know that there is a higher power at work, of course, 
like this guy getting drafted is a big deal because there's thousands of people trying to get drafted. And so he doesn't just retire and go, cool, I got drafted. I don't need to work hard. No, now you need to work harder. And so just always being mindful that like God's at work and there's something bigger going on and just surrendering to that faith of like showing up to control what you can control and then surrender the rest, you know? Bro, I'm so glad you brought that up. Man, my father would always say to me, hard work comes before the dream. And I think that as someone, especially past when the pandemic hit and everything, it kind of helped us all to slow down. Oh my God, I loved it. You know, yeah. and it was amazing. It just humbled everyone. It humbled everyone. But I feel like now that we're back, there is a little bit of this laziness that I feel like that has been ingrained into the culture. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of like hustling, and I'm guilty of this too, saying, that's my Epson computer. Shout out to Epson. <laughs> Sponsoring this video. Sponsoring this video. Um, the printer works, y'all. Okay, so you... Yeah. yeah, so I just feel that like, you know, even I was like, hustling is canceled, right? Like it's, it's about uh, just calming our nervous systems and working from this place that's like at, with ease and grace. And I believe in that. But man, I know for sure if there's one thing that works, man for the most successful people in the world is they work and they work hard. Yeah. They work and they work hard. I have not gotten to where I am today without working extremely hard, yeah. but hard is something that hard work I think has a bad rep, but like work, work is meant to be hard. We throw these adjectives, but it's like, no, 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 no. Like let's just work yeah. hard because we love what exactly, we do exactly, exactly and when you work you're all in on work no matter what it is you do the same way that i'm all in when i'm with my daughter all of my attention and presence is to her or all in when i'm with ashley all in with her like no matter what i'm doing it's being all in and like I, I i i just don't think that like you can succeed and achieve your goals without doing the work internally and externally yeah. and actually working hard but loving it yeah yeah no, that's everything, man. Yeah, the the laziness or the entitledness of just like, I'm just gonna find my partner, right? I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna, my dream it's just gonna money come will, to you. It's gonna yeah, manifest. Money will find me. My par dream partner will find me. And and like, yeah, there's a balance to like, you know, you know, surrender and showing up to like get to the gym, bro. Like LeBron James didn't win four rings and now he's like good. Now he's like, no, I'm gonna win a fifth ring. You know what I'm saying? So like, actually, after you win, you just want to keep winning because. He's committed to the game of hustle. I'm committed yeah. to changing people's lives until the, my final breath, man. I don't care. Like the the day before I die, man, if I'm out there volunteering or serving or on a call with some kid that needs help, like I will take my final breath making sure I'm like, you know, serving and helping people in, in whatever capacity that is. And so, um, yeah, we're committed to the game. And, you know, LeBron James is 20 years in and, you know, just still hungry as ever. And uh, that's what set him apart. And I think Steph will be that way. I think the greatest of all time will be that way. So just, yeah, stay hungry. and Yeah, stay humble. Humble and hungry. Yep. Humble and hungry. Yeah. Right? Like some of the best athletes you see that, like, they won the championship. They take a break. They celebrate themselves. But they're right back in that gym yeah. working on that skill to be the best. Mm -hmm. And it, So it's just, but they love it. Yeah, you exactly. you got to love it. You got you to gotta absolutely love it. You can't look at someone like Kobe Bryant for the, what he was doing 4 a.m. if he didn't love it. Yeah. Michael Jordan if he didn't love it. Yeah. Lewis Ham. Hamilton, he doesn't love it with yeah. F1, right? You look at, you know, Lionel Messi right now. You can just tell he just loves the game, right? Yeah. These guys just love the game. And that's what it's about, you know, and just being, and, and then when you love it, just all in on that, all in. And so, like, this is your time. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this right now, like, this is your time. Get in the arena. Have that bravery. Have that mental fortitude. Have that courage. Go build that confidence from you keeping promises to yourself and doing one more on top of it you know go and actually get healthier with fear when you when you fear something go and find out where that lie is and attack and, and go and lean into that do the uncertain thing do the hard thing do the thing that's going to be uncomfortable and watch where you, how much growth is there for you on the other side of it even if you fail you get back up try again get back up try again fail your way to the success and to the achievement of those goals and then have the emotional control you know, lean in and, and look at those triggers as your teachers. Turn those wounds into wisdom. You know, focus on your breath. Learn how to respond to things, not react to things. Mm -hmm. Be someone who actually craves for feedback and has the ability 
to lead from compassion, has the ability to uh, just know how to make decisions when you are centered, when you are rooted, and when you actually are clear and not just reacting, all right? And then have a vision. Get clear on that vision. Take some time. Journal. After hearing this, like, really, what do you want? Think big. Think big and envision it. What would it feel like for you to achieve that goal? Who would you be with? What would you do with, the, with that level of success? Who would you be? Who, who, who do you need to become in order for you to actually uh, have that level of success? Get that vision and think really, really big. And then throw in these extra things, right? Like, remember, it's bigger than you. Step into service, right? Be humble on the journey. Have the work ethic. No, it's not going to just come to you. Put in the hard work. Be willing to show up, you know, and, and get closer to God. He'll meet you halfway. You know, he'll continue to show up for you, but you got to show up for yourself first, you know, and then what were the other two that I had? Uh, <laughs> geez. Oh man, those other two were great. Yeah, teamwork. Don't go at Always it alone. Be a, be, a, be a part of a community. Don't go at it and be, do it alone. And always be a student. Stay curious. Stay learning. All right? Join the Creator Collective and yeah. ride with us. All right, guys. So I hope this episode was powerful for you. Um, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share this. Make sure to rate the podcast. It means the world to us. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for being a part of the journey. And uh, we're back. And so my, my boy BC Cern is in the house. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you. We celebrate you as a leader, as someone who's leaning in to bigger dreams, bigger visions for themselves. If you're listening to this, we, we fuck with you and we appreciate you. Yes, sir. Be the leader. Walk in wisdom. Peace. Yeah.